Yeah, so welcome everybody to um, the third installment of uh, Intermissive Course Book Club. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any important announcements we've already mentioned. If you could just put your location next to your name, um, if you can, so we know where everybody is from. As per usual, don't believe in anything. We're here to discuss, to question, to debate um, these concepts that Tatiana is bringing to us in her book. And um, I think that's all we need to say. So Tatiana, I hand over to you. All righty. So everyone, good morning, good night, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, welcome back. And what I was telling while I was on mute <laughs> is that I can't believe it's been four weeks already because it was just like that the last time we met in the last session. So yeah, time flies. And we have to, you know, I was reading the chapter and I was like reflecting about my own life and my priorities. So I'm like, well, time is going fast now that I'm getting older and it's time to rethink about some priorities, recycle some traits that I have. And uh, it was pretty interesting to read the book again, these chapters and I hope you guys have some had have had some reflections as well. Um, so today we are discussing the chapters. Have you read the chapters, guys? Yes. Okay. So, and did you do the intermission? Intermission impossible. The homework. Yes. <laughs> No, oh, Kim, not, oh, Magali, what is, this is the team. <laughs> I answered the questions in the book, if that counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it counts, of course, right? And, um, but anyway, hi, Michiko, how are you? Where are you? Still in Canada? No, I'm in Japan now with Fernandez. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. oh, what's going on? <laughs> one is projected and the other one is intraphysical that's it <laughs> <laughs> so guys let's great to see you guys here and the first thing I wanted to ask you um, is for you guys to tell me a little let's do a little check-in how how your last few weeks have been uh, if you have had any interesting experiences reading the book or any ideas that came or any um, insight on the theme? I had uh, pretty much like you said, I had the same thing about priorities and about how to do the most with the time I have now because I've learned a lot and I've been... On, on, more than 20 years in consensuality, how fortunate I am for that, but uh, you know how much I already have and the priorities that I I need to take care. I think it's most was close to your reflection. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, but at least for myself, by reading the chapter, I had lots of, you know, reflections on where I am now in terms of my proaxis, uh, what areas of my life I need to, you know, speed up some stuff, do like prioritize some things and other areas of my life that I'm like happy with at this stage. Uh, but I want to hear from you guys. Anyone else? Yes, I, I would like also to say uh, three weeks ago, I went, I was in a workshop about Buddhist teachings. And it was for me very interesting to find my roots over there in Buddhism and to understand how come that I'm so open now to be, I don't know, to look for 
Buddha nature, what is in conscientology is called serenity, so to speak. Why am I kind of obsessed with assistentiality? And it was very for me. I, 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 I had this inner knowledge that is not for the first time. I'm interesting in. I'm interested in those topics, and it helps me a lot to to make a connection between Buddhist teachings and conscientology to see where I am now and what I had to improve in my docenity. And it helps me a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, how how come you you know you are connected to Buddhism? How does how did this happen? It since I was very little the terminology is very familiar to me and during me the meditation or I don't know when I'm reading a book about Buddhist teachings, they are they are speaking to me, I don't know, like they are my friends. That's... Yeah, they yeah, and they're teaching the way they see some things are I don't know, na natural to me. Yeah. That's really cool. Anyone else, guys? If you don't want to speak, you can just type in the comments and I can read. So uh, feel free to write any comments or any ideas that you have. And um, and I want to hear from you guys. Anyone else want to share a little how these last few weeks were? I, uh, I will. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, my experience was in the last uh, month. I think it's a bit uh, older because I must admit that I'm so busy and stressful now that I don't even have have time to 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 have enough lucidity to remember or to or to write down my experiences. Um, but uh, well, I think that uh, this old experience one month and a half probably uh it was um a very vivid experience during the um let's say intermissive course and uh, i was in um in a class in a big aula of a university let's say very similar to to magna aula from an university and um, we are there to to make the the final adjustment of our praxis i thought that uh, it was rather uh, a precognition than a than a retrocognition and um, um we uh, we were organized on on smaller groups um and uh, between between us between the the people from a group where certain uh, of course uh, uh, affinities uh, and uh, we were we were talking about where to go and what to do and uh, at a certain moment somebody came like I don't know like an evolutionologist uh, who told us that there is an very important uh, item that should be included in our uh, in our praxis, the praxis of all of us that we were there and we were preparing for for um, resoma, and that item in our praxis was to to come and improve uh, aspects um of the um, uh conscienciological community uh that in this life um we uh we understand um we don't understand properly always and to and to improve some mistakes that we are doing now um well, I I tried to find the best uh, uh, words not to well not to 
to to express exactly my experience and not to to harm let's say with with what uh, I said, but uh, for me, this uh, that experience was was very impactful. And as a uh, people living abroad, um, not in Brazil, and in a way far from the the core of conscienciology, for me, it uh, it has made a good sense. That's, that's true. It. Yeah. If you remember any mistakes that we need to correct, just let us know, okay? Oh, yeah, I don't think probably in the intermissive period I will, but now, no, because if I if if I um if I were uh, aware and lucid, probably and not only I, but all of us probably we won't uh, do those mistakes, absolutely sure. Awesome. So uh, I see uh, Pamela has raised her hand. Uh... Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good I got morning. some. I got some experience nearby Andina. Uh, I think some days ago, I in my mind came some images, like flashes, some memories, and I felt the presence of many. Uh, some people which I know from Conscienciology online. I only know people online, okay? And it was a beautiful uh, building, a uh, white building, uh, like a university. And we finished some the course, okay? And everyone celebrating, very happy. We finished it. Now we will start. <laughs> and and telling uh, and speaking, uh, we will live around the world, we will be everywhere, we will be friends, we will help each other. So very positive, very happy, very nice uh, memory. And like everyone uh, speaking like this for each other, but to be in our uh, deep memory like that, like we will remember this, we don't, we will, we will, but like a party, everyone very happy, very happy. And also, uh, I I got some images of some exercises, energetic exercises in the nature. Very nice. Um, some people doing uh, like um, syn uh, energetic symphony with the with the trees and with the wind, with the water, and con uh, making the emotions calm to work with the energy of the nature. It it remember me something like um, Tai Chi Chuan sometimes, and uh, sometimes doing materializations of energies uh, of birds and uh, making the movements of the water, like with the hands and water is going and water is coming, like exercise, put water up, water up, put water down, water down, do like uh, uh, circles with the water, water with circles, put water down, water down, <laughs> but very, uh, very uh, some free exercises and some directed exercise. It was very, very nice for me. <laughs> wow, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but see, see, I want to share this because Andina told, okay? But very nice, very, very interesting for me. Guys, this is so, you have no idea how valuable it is for me to hear that, you know, because... Uh, these uh, comments that both of you made now have any, any everything to do with the book and with the theme. And it's so good when someone uh, speaks about an experience and, and this activates someone else's memory. And that's what we are trying to do here by studying this theme, like trying to help each other remember our own intermissive forces, right? Um, I see Michiko has raised her hand, but before I go to Michiko, I just wanted to mention that uh, Grace has commented, has put a comment saying that she had many experiences related to both chapters that we are discussing today. So this is awesome as well. Lovely to hear that, Grace. Uh, and Michiko, do you want to say, do you want to uh, say anything? Yeah, thanks, Tatiana. I just um, wanted to say that it's been an interesting few weeks. I've been traveling um, a lot in these past few weeks. And I think it's interesting bringing a book like Intermissive Course along with me. 
um, on my travels and to read it in different holothosines. Um, I can say that when I do read it in certain places, I feel the presence of a lot of concierges arrive <laughs> around me as I'm reading the book, um, almost like a curiosity maybe. And it made me reflect on the fact that, you know, we are never alone. And there are concierges that are also paying attention to how we spend our time. And, you know, there are probably intermissivists all over the world. And it made me reflect that, you know, you always have the opportunity to be an example, no matter, you know, where you are around the world. And you could be alone and you always have that opportunity to be an example. So, yeah, just wanted to share that. That's really, really interesting. I agree with you 100%. Okay, guys, so if anyone else wants to speak, just raise your hand anytime, okay, or write in the comments, but we have to go ahead with our next activity. I don't remember if I don't, let's check if you remember that you had a homework that and that you needed to prepare a little summary of the chapters. Did anyone do this by any chance? Oh, bad, bad, bad students, <laughs> bad readers. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that's totally fine, okay? Because we are going to discuss it now and I wanted to hear from you. My question is, from the first chapter that we had to read today, which is uh, chapter three, Valuable Utilization of Human Life, it talks basically about... Uh, how we um, prioritize our lives, right? This is what Magali was talking about, the priorities that she was reflecting on, and I had this feeling as well. Uh, so uh, taking useful advantage of the current existence. I don't know how you guys feel, and I wanted to hear from you as well, but for me, it's I feel as if I have so much knowledge, so much experience, and I just can't express this in the intraphysical life as I I know I feel like that I, I really am, the, the real me as a, an extraphysical consciousness. And uh, what I was reflecting is why or... Why can't I make myself like as a whole, the consciousness more um, active in the intraphysical life? What uh, prevents me from manifesting my more, more evolved, you know, consciousness? And what are the things that I need to change or to adapt or to recycle in order to um, make this consciousness more aware of the reality of the extra physicality and manifest myself in a more evolved way. So uh, I guess this chapter brings a lot of these kinds of reflections. And um, and I wanted to ask you guys if by, by reading this chapter, what kinds of um, ideas did you have in terms of your own lives? Did you make a connection between the chapter and your lives at the moment? I, yes, so yes, is the answer. And um, I had uh, probably two two key things that, that, that jumped out of me. And what I find really interesting, so I read this chapter probably like the day after we had our last session. Um, I was really in tune. I was really in the flow of intermissive cause. And, and I read this chapter. And then I forgot about it. Um, and so one of the things that I'd highlighted is the technique of reviewing of routines, right? Like I sort of made a, a note about that. Um, but I hadn't, I didn't do anything with it until earlier in the week, I came across um, this other online lecture about um, um, becoming um in in indistractable so becoming so you can no longer be distracted with things right so there's this guy who's coined this term indistractable and he, and he talked about that and he he 
one of the key things he has is to plan out your day. So I did that. I, I planned out my week, you know, created this particular kind of value, like a value-based um, planner, right? So, so you cover all things in your life that you value, that you want to give attention to. And then I came back today as I'm re reviewing this before our session today, and I realized that this had, this topic had been with me this whole time, right? And it had been permeating in my subconscious and my background. It had been kind of highlighting to me during these weeks how often I become distracted, how I'm not using my time properly. And um, and then then this other thing came and prompted me to take to take action. So um, so that was one thing. And the other thing that I found really interesting was this point about intermissivists. Um, uh, and it kind of relates to the point that Pamela just shared, that experience that Pamela shared, um, the way um, intermissivists across the world and how we all networks of, of people really um, who are connected to each other through that shared intermissive period experience. And um, it just struck me when I was reading that the importance for us in Australia to um, strengthen our connections here and to um, really think about why we're here, why are we here in Australia and what are we wanting to achieve together? So as a group, you know, we can create more as a group than we can as individuals doing our own little thing Kim, did you what did you use to make this planner what did you use any um app or anything or just oh, a excel i just use excel oh okay yeah if if it, if it worked for you and if it's interesting maybe you can share with us just the template in the whatsapp yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Because this is cool. This is something that maybe we can use and help as well. Yeah, I think so. Okay, who is next? Magali, who is next? Mick, Mickey was next. Mickey? Okay. Yes. Reading the fourth chapter, I the the thing who drew my attention was uh, idol friendships. So to speak, in the fourth, I didn't know what the meaning of the the word evil and well useless or i or i don't know lazy not not evolutionary so many i i thought about many aspects of this world and i i don't know i i was thinking that maybe idle friendship is related also is related with i don't know ego karma and group karma but when we are or hope that we are on another step of, in our evolution, when we are heading to, towards polykarma, I don't know. We don't we don't use this terminology of idol. Because as far as I in my extra physical experiences, and for sure all of all of you know, our help helpers are helping everyone, no matter if he or she is interested or not in evolution or in, I don't know, I have this sense of not for the, I, I, I really understand the terminology and the fact that maybe some sometimes there are people who are worthy to be left behind, but this is, only at one moment in our evolution in our evolution i don't know i don't think this is the way because I, for me running away from some people and i don't and saying that i don't want to be surrounded by people who are not interested in evolution and conscientology this is not my way because i have to be with them with my i don't know we are talking about self-knowledge but when we have to know the other ones we have to be with them to mingle with them in order to to do our assistance in a proper way and not only i don't know in only in our mind and in rational way i mean i think i i would have growth opportunities even greatest more opportunities to grow when I am with people 
who are not interested in conscientology. This is me. This is, I mean, this is me for the moment. I don't want to be separate for people. I don't want to run away. I I understand your point, and I think it's very it's it's valid. Uh, and while you were speaking, you know this this topic also drew my attention while I was I was reading the book. You know, I started to think about this again. And there are some things when you were talking now, I was thinking there are some aspects about idol uh, friendships that, that we could think of. The first one, and I guess it's the main idea in, in this chapter, is when we have a group of friends that uh, we are connected um, through our immaturities. So we are connected and when we are together, uh, for example, if I have a group of, of friends and we are connected by my immaturities, when I'm interacting with them, I tend to be more immature and to do things that are not uh, the things that I, the intermissivist, would be happy to be doing, would be that would be fulfilling to me as a, a consciousness in evolution, okay? So, for example, when I was in my 20s, I used to go to nightclubs every weekend. And I had this group of friends. And we just would hang out and go to parties and do, you know, spend all the night in nightclubs and doing, you know, nothing interesting, just having fun. And when I started to change my way of thinking and, and um, aiming at evolution, uh, it just didn't match anymore. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't prioritize what I wanted from that point on st and still hang out with them and have the time with them that they wanted me to be with them. So I had to make, there was one point that I had to make a choice uh, and uh, use my time in a different way, you know? Uh, yeah. This is this is one point. The second point that I thought while we were speaking is the isolation. And this happened to me as well. So I, uh, when I started to understand that I was in an intermissivist and I needed to prioritize my evolution, I got rid of these people that used to be my friends and I was isolated. So I had no friends. I had, um, you know, I had, I started volunteering in Conscientiology, so I had uh, lots of people I was interacting with, which was really motivating for me. But I didn't actually have friends that I could, you know, if I had a difficult time or if I needed just someone to, you know, listen to and, and interact with. Um, I just was isolated. And this was not healthy either because we evolved together, right? So this is not healthy uh, to be isolated because you just feel like you are more evolved than all the other people are not. They don't know what you're doing. They don't know that they need to evolve, that we are evolving and stuff like that. So just get rid of them. It doesn't work either, right? And there is another thing that I wrote down here so I, I, did, I didn't forget while you were speaking is the assistance, right? You talked about the helpers. So... Sometimes we are away from that group and at some point in the future, we are going to get back to that group to interact with them in order to assist that group. So I'm not going to be interacting with that group uh, connected to my immaturities. I'm going to be uh, getting closer to them again, but with another motivation which is to help them to assist them the best way I can in order to help them evolve right so there are many many topics related to this and it it was really interesting because your comment uh, mentioned all these together right right but you know I I was thinking I don't want to to run from I think that I can help them now now I in, I'm in this moment of my life when I can meet with some other people, I don't know, maybe they are drinking beer or 
but I don't. I can be I can be with them, really to be with them, and to know that in some other way my presence between them helps help them. Totally. Yes, yes. I totally agree I, with I, I, I don't think that only being surrounded up by our, I don't know, our, our, our being surrounded by people only interested in conscientology is like sleeping on a bed of roses, as you said in the book. We, we need challenges to evolve, and those challenges come from those kind of friends. They are maybe, this is my, and thank you. Yeah, I agree with you, and and it 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 has is and this is related to what Michiko had said before as well, when she said we can you know be an example wherever we are, and anywhere, right? Awesome, ah, uh, Grace, you're next. Let me unmute myself. Yeah, have we got time? Because I know we need yeah, to be conscious. Of course, we do. Um, so ah. Uh... There's so much that have been happening for me, and with this chapter number three, in particular, um, it was interesting how some memories from my childhood came as well. Uh, you know, talking about the uh, Clary task and console task. Um, I remember when I was in primary school and high school, um, and you know, being a, one of the top students, everybody wanted to have homework from me. And I remember vividly how I never wanted to give them the answers. And I said, I can teach you how to do that instead. And many people, unfortunately, didn't want that. They just wanted, you know, the answers. So that taught me also, you know, where some of us may be, you know, at the level like they're not willing to learn, they're not ready to learn. And, um, you know, about the priorities that they have. And also teaching me how I can perhaps encourage them to to learn, if it makes sense. Um, also, uh, another thing was, you know, uh, Kim mentioned about prioritizing and and you know planning and um, and since I was a child, again, you know, this has come up for me. I always uh, had um, schedules. I was just creating. A schedule for me, you know, planning the next three years, five years, and then making a smaller task for a year, you know, where I'm going to go, what do I need to do, and then per month, per week, and then per day. So um, it's interesting because that, you know, that has always been like my best friend to know what I need to focus on and help me, um, you know, stick to the to the plans that I um put myself uh, towards and uh, and I'm pretty proud you know I'm pretty proud of the things that I have done so far uh, in both Clary task and console task but mainly in Clary, uh, Clary task and also now recently by studying more and um, you know Michaela you were talking about you know surrounding yourselves with people who may need help um, I feel like we actually, or personally, I learn a lot from interacting with others because I see um, parts of me that perhaps, you know, I recognize the parts of me from the past and how I approach that. And then I can utilize that to explain, you know, this is what I've done. This is what worked for me. Have you tried that? Um, and it helps me understand you know, empathically where someone is. Um, I still got lots to learn, but uh, I thought, you know, that, that these last few weeks that has been happening a lot and heaps about prioritizing, you know, where my time goes and with some changes in my personal life, um, that has been like a, you know, a top priority. Um, so, yeah. So that's that's been happening for me in terms of the chapter three. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yes, I guess uh, priorities are something that we all thought about these days, right? 
by reading reading this chapter. It's it was really interesting for me. Anyone else? Good. So I wanted to um talk since we are talking about this uh, uh valuable utilization of human life. There is a point in the book that I talk about self mimesis. So do all, are you all familiar with this term, self-mimesis? Yes. So um, I was doing this mental exercise in my head, thinking like at, my, at myself as an extra physical consciousness in the intensive course with all my level of lucidity, maturity, uh, potentials, right? And um, and then looking at myself now and thinking uh, what traits that I have or what um, ways of doing things or my routine or my ways of thinking that actually are related to self-mimesis and not to the person that I was planning to become you know in this lifetime and i want to make this as exercise with you guys as well uh you know when we if any if all of you guys stop and think now at you know your intensive courses where you were what you were doing or how you were planning this lifetime back then and what things that you do now that are not well aligned with what you had planned to do in different kinds of aspects of your life, right? And uh, and while I was, I was reflecting about this, I came to this uh, entry of the Encyclopedia of Conscientiology called An, An Adapted Intermissivist. So this is an, uh, an uh, entry of the encyclopedia that has, I don't know, maybe four pages or something like this that talks about intermissivists like us that um, had planned their lives, had planned their praxis. And once they are born, they don't actually use the time in a way that helps them evolve and it's interesting because sometimes we we have pretty clearly the things that we don't need to do anymore but we keep doing right and i wanted to share with you guys one uh one slide that has to do with this that i have just talked about this entry of the encyclopedia so it talks about an adapted intermissivist can you guys see my mouse moving okay good so uh so in this entry of the encyclopedia they discuss uh some aspects of the unadapted intermissivist so maybe uh i or you guys every like now and then can feel like that as well so what, what is it? What happens with this person who is unadapted once they are in, in born in the intraphysical life? So the first thing is that these people, they are ex-students aware of their own duties. So they are intermissivists that know they were born with a life project. They know that they need to evolve, but... Um, uh, they are they are aware of the duties of the things they need to do. Obviously, they don't remember a hundred percent of the tasks they they need to do, but they are aware they need to find out and do some mission of the in their lives, right? But what happens? Instincts prevail. So when they are young and they are adolescents, and then they start working, they have their relationships. The instincts of the human life prevail and instead of prioritizing what is more important they just live the li live the life uh as the average people 
And when this happens for a while, sometimes for years, uh, they get to this third point, which is personal crisis. So they get they they come to a moment in their lives and they're like, oh, I'm I'm really unhappy with my life. Sometimes they have depression, anxiety. Um, they are not happy with their relationships. Uh, everything seems to be wrong in their lives, even if everything is okay. They have no serious problems, no problems, uh, health problems money problems, but it, for some reason, things look bad for them, right? Why does this happen? Because in, intrinsically, uh, they know they are in debt. They had so much, uh, they were given so much in the intensive course, so much help, so much assistance, preparation, high level helpers that were assisting them, giving them all the support they needed. Uh, when they left the intermissive courses to be reborn, um, they had their their peers, just like uh, we heard, you know, uh, the, the comments from Pamela. When we were leaving the intensive courses, we were all very excited and happy and motivated and confident that we would be able to do some tasks as a group. And in the everyday life, this, um, you know, is there somewhere. Um, and then the person has the intraphysical melancholy. This means that they are really going into a stage that um, is more serious, right? They don't feel they fit. They are doing what they need to do. And the, the um, level of depression sometimes is more serious, and they need to care to take care of it. And uh, there might be cases of proexophobia. What does this mean? They, for some reason, are uh, not aligned with their proexis and they are in a level of self-intrusion that they are against of any ideas that have to do with evolution or with the priorities that they set themselves to themselves. Um, so this is the main idea of the unadapted in intermissivists. And uh, Kim, you wanna you wanna comment anything, Kim? You need to unmute yourself, Kim. Sorry, <laughs> um, I said a lot. Um, no, one of the things I was thinking as I was reading the book, I was thinking about near death experiences, and um, and not exactly about this context, but now as you're talking, I'm wondering. Because one of the things that strikes me often about near-death experiences is how many of them are um, so positive, right? People, because we know that when people die, people have all manner of different kinds of experiences, ending up in the barotrosphere or whatever. But not all, but 90%, 95% of near-death experiences are very positive. There's seems to be very involved helpers you know lots of love all those things that people experience and because it often creates a profound change in people's lives right that they start prioritizing things that um, they hadn't prioritized before so much in aligned with what might be aligned with an existential program so i guess just hearing you now i'm wondering whether perhaps um a lot of people having near-death experiences perhaps would have been in this category of intermissivists who got sidetracked and then that's like the final chance to shake them out of it yeah i i think this is a um a measure right like less resort um to help them be, be get back on track um uh, i think that we don't need to get to this point <laughs> But if it happens, it's definitely a good way to show the person that they are assisted, right? They have extra physical helpers that are trying to actually help them to find a way, right? Um, 
And I guess uh, you probably have seen movies with about near death experiences. There's a, a very, very clear pattern, right? They are going this way and then they have the experience and then they are back on track. They change their lives and um, recycle many of the, the traits they had. So definitely I agree with you that these people might be deviating from their proaxis, right? Um, but anyway, going back to the, the possible reasons, why do people end up getting, uh, you know, getting this, getting into this situation? Uh, some possible reasons according to this entry of the encyclopedia, encyclopedia is insufficient or unplanned study. So they are they they are born, but they didn't really uh, spend more time reflecting and studying on their in their lives to actually get more knowledge of their the path they the paths they need to do the priorities and all that. The second point: overly busy with wrong priorities. This happens a lot with all of us. Mistaken choice of profession. Uh, I always say that the profession is not the proaxis. The profession is not your existential program, but it's a good part of it because you're going to spend eight hours of your day doing that thing. If it's something more positive, you tend to um, um, be able to assist more people, to be an example to your, your peers, uh, to do some kind of job that task that is uh, will help other people. So with I always say that job your job is not your proaxis, but depending on the job, it helps a lot to fulfill you know the the tasks that you need to do. Family restrictions. Sometimes you have issues at with your family that you need to take care of, and you just have to prioritize that, and then you stop. 5, 10, 20 years later and you, you look at your life and you just didn't do whatever you had to do. Negligence with health, monopoly of instincts, uh, and I guess the idol friendships could, could fit pretty well there, Mickey. You know, when you have just 10, 20, 30 years doing the same things with the same group and it's just like you can't get rid of that situation anymore. You are trapped, right? financial situation so there's a moment that you just you can't do anything because every proaxis has a cost so my question for you is what how much does your proaxis cost so it's important to think about that right and the ab abstinence of the barrator sphere do you know what that is does anyone want to talk about this if you know what that is can you give a definition of abstinence of the barrier sphere? Yes. It's a, when you mention your party <laughs> at the 20s, you know, and just party and drinking. And uh, it's a little bit like lose everything, but in, even lose your lucidity, right? It's the time we want just to escape to sphere again that is for me a sign of uh, when we are you know I, how I want to go back yeah it has a lot to do Magali with I guess the monopoly of the instincts right we we are when we are in the intensive course we are really like aware of you know our reality and mature but once we are back in this intraphysical body with this little brain and this body with uh, full of instincts, instincts um, that are more uh, in a lower level of lucidity than the uh, extraphysical, you know, in terms of course, hometown, uh, we just get caught up in this situation and uh, we we want to you know choose what is easier, what gives us more pleasure, and what when we used to have this in this lower level was the barotrosphere. So sometimes we do miss, we do feel the abstinence of some 
senses, instinct, instincts, and things that we used to experience in the barotosphere, right? So when I was in my 20s and I was going to parties and have fun, having fun, and just a point, the interesting thing, I never drank and I never drank any alcohol in my whole life, even when I was in my 20s. All my, my friends used to, uh, but I was just there for the fun. Uh, but anyway, I was like, um, 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 how do you say when you smoke, but you don't, you just smell the smoke from everyone else's and that affects passive. you as well? Passive smoker. You were passive. passive. Passive, yes. So I was passive smoking, obviously, which is uh, pretty bad. Um, so, but anyway, that, you know, feeling of the instincts and being with the friends and having fun and just um, experiencing that moment was actually related to the, you know, abstinence of Baratrosphere for sure. I saw someone raised their hands. Who was it? Uh, yeah, I, I was, but in fact, it's very clear now, um, now when, uh, when you, you know, what you has just explained, because my question was um, why an intermissivist would miss uh, Baratrosphere, but not the intermissive course, but you explained uh, very, very clearly. Thank you. Yeah. And it's something that we should think, you know, because I'm giving an example of when I was in my 20s, but I'm 100% sure there are some things that I do now that still show that I have some traits or some instincts that draw me to the absence of uh, the baritosphere that I need to change, that I need to uh, recycle. And this is something that we, we should think of as well. Uh, in terms of our routines, of the things we do. You know what? Hobbies. Hobbies are great. I really I really uh, am, am for hobbies. But depending on the hobby that you have, uh, it's just wasting time. A waste of time, you know? So sometimes we, we spend time uh, with things that uh, don't help us at all just it's just a waste of time you know something that is a waste of time that all of us do and it's pretty bad and it's gonna get worse i guess with the new generations phones they are great they help us a lot but on the other hand we spend too much time connected and uh depending on what we do with the you know social media and all that we're just wasting time and this is important for us to think when we are studying this chapter, uh, you know, of how we prioritize our intraphysical life, right? Good. All righty. Any questions here, guys? Can I go ahead to the next slide? I see a few people like with the heads like this, the, the hands in the head like this, like, what's going on with my life? <laughs> It's really funny. And uh, Fernandez, and I just see your, your photo, you're smiling, and everyone else is like this. <laughs> it's so funny to see. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's go ahead. Let me see another slide. And uh, while I was reading the book, I, I remember this um, um, uh, sentence from Dr. Valdo Vieira in one of his books uh, that he says, if you want to know how long you spent in the intermissive course, research your level of lucidity doing, during your daily manifestations. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting because, you know, we are always curious to know how long did I spend in the intermissive course? How was it? And all that. But I, I believe that the more lucid we are, the more we were prepared to face the things we are facing now in this lifetime. It makes sense, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. And uh, yes, Kim? I, I guess the only problem with that is I think it's very common for us to have a distorted... It's very hard to know your own lucidity, objectively, because you only know the lack of your lucidity, like it's... You know, it's a shock when you go, oh, here's this thing I wasn't lucid of. 
for all this time, all these years, or whatever, right? Um, that's when you notice it. But uh, yeah, it's a very, it's a difficult one to 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 objectively um, evaluate. I I would say. Yeah, I agree with you. But you know, like when you are in, when we are ten years old, and then twenty, then thirty, then forty, um, we are more mature, and we can look back and see the immaturities that we we had. Um, and once we are aware of that, if we keep doing the same things, now knowing that we are not supposed to be doing that, it's not mature. Uh, this is the problem, I guess, when we know and we keep doing, uh, and not that we don't know, right? So being lucid, I guess, has to do also of the awareness of how you use your will and your more evolved traits to cut the immaturities and the uh, instinct. I guess the more we can bring this to our routine more we are the more we are more lucid that's my idea for us to think yes uh mm -hmm. professor yeah yeah can i yeah sure uh professor valdo used to say that we he used to you know joke with us and ask uh, when you want to be lucid which which age do you want to have like five, seven, <laughs> ten? No, and I think in our life there is a moment. Sometimes it la is later on in our life. Sometimes it's earlier on in our life that we have more lucidity, and I think that is something to observe also because. Uh, when I start to be more lucid, I see that sometimes it's after 50, sometimes it's 30, sometimes there is people that is in their 20, they start to be more lucid. And that is something we can observe together with this, you know, this level of lucidity. And, uh, you know, I was thinking during the, this uh, while I was reading the book, um did i stop sharing no okay um and uh when i was reading the book i thought that um you know we when we are in the intensive courses or in the extra physical dimension before we are born we are we are like in the highest level of lucidity that we can achieve if we are obviously uh working on it right on our lucidity and uh when we are born we become babies and then adolescents and all the hormones and all that um probably we we manifest our real reality sometimes like 5 10 20% only of you know the full potential that we have so we are basically like um uh, huge consciousnesses acting like you know monkeys or dogs or cats um and uh the the the, the challenge is to acquire this maturity maturity as soon as possible and uh, even now at this moment there are some aspects in our lives that depending on our priorities that show to us that we are not as evolved in that aspect as we wish or as we plan to be. And uh, and when I was thinking about this, I remember this image, this memory came into my mind and I wanted to share with you. 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, I, I, I uh, traveled to Africa with my partner and we went to a safari. And it was really interesting. We saw all the, the animals and it was fantastic. But the, the one experience that I had was, was really interesting. I'm going to, to share with you uh, some photos. Can you see this photo? Yeah. 
So this was a family, a group of uh, baboons that we saw in the park. And we stopped, like we, we were driving in the park and every time we saw animals, we would stop and watch. And this is basically what we do, right? In the safaris. And um, and uh, we stopped and started watching these uh, this family of baboons. And we spent like, I don't know, 20 minutes watching them. And when I was watching these families and their behaviors and and you know how they were communicating with each other, uh, I I something in my mind changed to a different uh, pace that I could feel more. I I, I did like a sort of a, of a energetic connection with this group, and then I saw this baboon. And uh, I have the pictures because Tony, my partner, was taking the pictures, okay? <laughs> While I was like in my, my thoughts, he was taking the photos. And I saw this, this baboon and he was just there by himself. He was eating this nut. And he was there looking at the nut. And he was opening the nut. And he was like trying the nut and then he looked at the nut again and totally unaware of everything that was happening. He was not aware of anything. He was just, the world for him was this nut. And I was like looking at him and I thought, wow, how can, how can this happen? Like this, this consciousness is there just there's a consciousness in there and he's just his world is this nut he doesn't see like the other baboons he doesn't see the park he doesn't know even though we are here looking at him he doesn't know we are on earth he doesn't know about the planets he doesn't know about evolution and i started thinking about this and looking at him and he was there and at the same moment, I just stopped and I noticed, I felt there was like a much more evolved consciousness looking at me thinking the same way. It was fantastic. So I was like in the middle, I was looking at a consciousness that was less evolved than me and, and making my reflections about that. While there was a more evolved consciousness somewhere looking at me, thinking about that, and having their reflections as well. So it was like um, a fantastic experience I wanted to share with you guys. And that's what I wanted to propose to you guys. But I see there is a comment here. Let me have a look. I have to leave. Pamela, thank you. Thank you so much. See you next time. Okay, so um, what, I, what I was planning to uh, do now is for us to stop a little. And, you know, based on this picture here, the girl, girl looking at the mirror, we are going to try to do this, the same thing. One side is us, the extra physical consciousness in the intensive course with our highest level of lucidity, um, maturity, cognition, intelligence, um, and you name it. And you are there looking at yourself, the consin, the intraphysical consciousness now, who is struggling in the intraphysical life to do the proaxis. And uh, and by by looking at this person in the intraphysical life at yourself, I want you to have like five minutes now to make some notes. If you have a piece of paper or if you have a file in your computer, and uh, what you're gonna do by looking at yourself in the mirror as the concierge with the highest level of maturity that you have is uh, think and um, 
and make a list of all the routines, the actions, the ways of thinking that this intraphysical person has, or, um, you know, routines, anything, friendships, relationships that um, are preventing you to use, to make good use of the intraphysical life in an evolutionary way. So I'm going to give you now a few minutes and uh, you just try to do this exercise. Is it okay? Do you have any questions about it? No? Okay. So I'll count here uh, maybe 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. So when you finish your list, feel free to comment while the others um, are finishing. But let's give at least five minutes now for you to you know, reflect on this. You are a more evolved consciousness in the extraphysical dimension, looked at your own self in the intraphysical life, just like as I was looking at the baboon, you're looking at yourself and seeing in your whole life, different sections of your life, what uh, is preventing you from utilizing this lifetime the best way possible for your evolution. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right, guys. We are now five minutes in our time. So... If you are still right making your notes, no problem. But if there is anyone uh, who has finished and would like to make any comments, you don't need to say the areas of your life that you need to fix or anything, but you can share about your experience of doing it or any ideas or anything that drew your attention doing the activity. Hello, maybe I, I can share some ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> what I I was thinking during uh, this meeting, and when I I read the the chapter three especially, is is really interesting because I I feel I I feel like you mentioned before that you have uh, um, a lot of things to give, but <laughs> you you feel like uh, you you have to do more than you are doing, and so. Uh, for me, when I start to read the the, the chapter three, it was like uh, this exactly this feeling to see myself in the mirror and 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 talk to myself. Look, what you have done in the last twenty years that you did not read in, uh, write anything, any single word in 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 conscientiology, in in any article, any uh, verbet or entry, uh, of course, any book. Uh, because I, I I am in contact with conscientiology since 1999, and I was a volunteer uh, uh, in Brazil. Uh, but then in 2010, 2011, more or less, I I start to just go deep in my career, in my in my in my research. Which, by the way, I am a primatologist. I work with primates, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and so I start to do these. Uh, and I am uh, like that primate looking to another primate, <laughs> so it's like a, like this feeling that I I have when I when you show me the the, the picture. Um, and what I I was think is that the the feeling that I have is that I have a lot of experience even in this life in this life that I should share with people, and I am not doing this because I am writing papers, doing uh, genomic analysis, doing this kind of. Uh, uh, scientific things so i'm uh, very much involved in the in the scientific paradigm paradigm uh, and i just uh, do not prioritize the the, the 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 things in terms of conscientiology just because of these these uh, a lot of other things a lot of, of other papers to do and and, and and analysis to do in, in and so i i never stop to do this it's like i'm, I'm Thing that I, I I'm doing 24 hours per day if I can, uh, and I I don't feel tired to do this. I don't feel depressed, but I feel that I'm 
falling back, falling behind, falling back. I, I'm not, I'm not doing what I should do. I think that, that's the feeling, the general feeling. Uh, and when I was think about this exercise, is that I probably I should I, I should uh, do these uh, look at the the continue to study primate, but I think I have uh, now tools and experience to expand this this kind of. Uh, of analysis and, and 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 ideas and put this in the papers and share with people especially in in, in under the consensuology consensuological paradigm and that's is the 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 point i am falling back i'm falling behind <laughs> um and and recently i was talking with people from the verbeto verbeto programma de verbeto uh, yeah the like. ver ver verbatography program. Okay. Uh, I don't know in English the, the, the translation. But uh, I was talking about this and I, I registered in, in the program to write the verbat. Uh, the subject that was uh, selected was uh, a non-human primate. So I, I was supposed to write about this. But uh, some other things in my, in my life happened and I just uh, let this uh, uh, in a second plan again. So it's like I'm doing this for the last 20 years. <laughs> so when you show me that slide before, <laughs> I, I I thought, okay, she is describing myself, <laughs> me, she, she's describing me. I, I can see myself in that slide in, in several points. Uh, so, and I, I have to say that is a shame, but uh, uh, yes. And I think this is the point where I'm falling back and this exercise is, is very clear to me this chapter is very clear to me and this uh, and that's why i i registered to to be in this uh, group to to write to read this book because in this way i can push myself to read this and think more about this and take some action that that's <laughs> my man my man uh, challenge now is start to put this in my routine create a routine to write in consensuology to write papers write uh, 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 verbets and an uh, entry for the encyclopedia and that's my main challenge so basically your picture is like me looking to another prime <laughs> that's the the idea that comes to my mind now <laughs> it's fantastic Felipe, because um i had no idea why this memory came to me of this trip and these exact photos that I had to look at <laughs> my files to find these photos to share with you guys. And for some reason, it was pretty, pretty clear that I uh, <laughs> wanted to share this with you guys, this experience based on uh, what I was reading in the book. So maybe now I know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's very clear to me at least <laughs> yeah, that's interesting yeah that's well you get the message right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah. really cool yeah and you i'm sure you have like plenty of knowledge and experience in conscientiology to to write tons of you know important stuff for the science and to assist people mm -hmm. and even your group you know from uh mm -hmm. Primatology, the science, the intraphysical science, and all that, academia and stuff. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, you 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 know you are you are part of them. So you now you are showing them a new paradigm that you know you, and you can do that. So maybe I don't know if it's your case, but sometimes we just know what you have to do, but. Since it's something that uh, is going to be challenging in terms of you um, and that group that you are part of, you, you just, um, you know, don't take the chance and do it because it's, it, 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 like, it might change the whole, you know, the whole situation, the whole relationships with that group, you know? I don't know if you... <laughs> Yeah, it's so another way to talk about evolution because we are very restricted to evolutionary biology, uh, uh, the, the bio biology as biological aspect of the, the evolution. But when you talk about uh, consciousness, you are talk about the the 
another kind of evolution and and it's like a vertical evolution in the sense that you are going to a, a, a direction to be a better person a better conscientious but in, in evolutionary biology they are very uh, careful about these terms because of the creationism and this kind of discussion and so yeah it's it's really it's really something that will mess a bit the 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 the, the structure but but is yes i think it's something that uh, it has to be done <laughs> yeah at yeah. least I feel that I I should uh, exactly. I, I should have uh, I could have done much more than I'm doing because basically nothing twenty years twenty five years I read knowing conscientiology and I'm really underachieving uh, underachieving the the what I as I was supposed to do yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's that's really interesting very interesting Magali you wanted to mention yes, I want to mention is to Philippe, you know, while you were talking, I was thinking, why? Why? Why you didn't? Because it's clear in your voice, in your holotocene, when you bring things, like you, you are into consensuality, you are an intermissivist, right? You, you connect with the ideas. And then you mentioned army sci science. And the science and evolutionary sciences, if, if you remember, uh, Darwin was there and uh, is Wallace, right? That was the one that also was doing the evolutionary idea with him. And Wallace mm -hmm. entered in the spiritism mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Darwin said to him, wow, be careful, you're going to... Uh, kill our baby, right? Because in the same way, you are into science. Imagine if you write an article. You have the strong trait of science, methodology, but you also have all these concepts that is keeping materialism for a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, why is difficult to you Philippe, that you have all the instruments to write and to talk about something. And I thought about the good karma that we are involved to. I'm also a biologist, you know, mm -hmm. with the, my, so my background. And uh, if we look in that way, maybe just as the, the only thing that comes is why, why he cannot. Yeah, that's the question I do to myself. <laughs> I ask to myself every day almost. But yeah, it's 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 crazy because I I cannot give you a, a clear answer why. But uh, it's something that uh, it's like I'm I'm pretending that I'm not seeing this. It's, it's for the last I don't know two decades. Uh, but it's yes, it's some. I I'm reaching a point that I it's really bothering me. <laughs> it's really uh, being a inconvenient truth for <laughs> to myself. Yeah, it's yeah. I, yeah. I I should not talk more. I I should do so. <laughs> yeah, I think I. But I have to you more. have to be aware that you are facing not be lucid is also to be aware that you're facing a group karma. That mm -hmm. you know when you want to go out of mafia, what they do with you. So yeah, imagine yeah. that is true physically. So if if we are aware. We can prevent and, and be more prepared to do the things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. This is really interesting, Philippe. Really. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what you are experiencing is just what all of us experience, right? In a moment or another, because you are sharing um, the, the pressure you are having to do something in your praxis. Um, but in my case, I have a book published. I'm like, I'm doing something, but there are other areas in my life that I feel the same pressure, you know, and the same with, you know, everyone else. So it's really interesting that you shared your, you know, your moment because it made me reflect about areas of my life that I feel the same and that, I cannot, I shouldn't be speaking anymore. I should be doing, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So that's it. But uh, before we go ahead, uh, I, I want to uh, share two comments. I don't know if you guys have read the first one from Grace. She said the, 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 the activity was interesting. I was actually telling myself how much I have already done and I should pat myself on the back, being proud of myself. And I received a few suggestions what to adjust. This is awesome. And this is uh, good to hear. And Michiko said, Felipe, this is fascinating and something I always wondered about biological evolution from a conscientiological point of view. Looking forward to your verbets and articles and the knowledge you have to share. Yes, me too. <laughs> That's really, when you were talking, I was like, wow, that would be really interesting to have a specialist talking about that. <laughs> so yeah, we want to hear what you have in there. Okay. Hear and read, right? <laughs> cool. Anyone else? Cool. Okay, so if no one else has anything to add, uh, I want to uh, just remind you if you um, made a list of these things that you think uh, should be recycled for in, in a way or changed or cut at the root, just, you know, make sure you have this... Uh, in a paper or printed in a way that you can maybe reflect about this in the next few weeks to take advantage of the helpers that are there around you to help you sort this out, okay? And before we finish today, I want to make a final discussion, which is about the, the, the question. The question that I have is, uh, what are the main traps that you guys think that makes it difficult for the intermissivist to prioritize their praxis? What are the main traps that we have in our intraphysical life nowadays um, that you, you could share to make us think that um, is something that all intermissivists should be aware of? I'll make the question again. What are the main traps in life that we have now that could make it difficult for the intermissivist to prioritize their existential program? Okay. Yes? yes. I, I just like uh, wasn't sure uh, of the reason why you're asking, um, Tatiana, because it seemed like it was on that uh, um, screen share that you did. And so I can talk about myself only. Uh, the two things that have stopped me from prioritizing at times, uh, uh, one is unrealistic expectations. Say so if I want, you know, put a goal that I want to achieve this and then um, I'm not achieving it as fast or as well or as much as I would like within a particular period of time. So, um, and then the disappointment can come. So. Um, I need to readjust, you know, because the life does happen. And that other thing is, second thing is family dynamics uh, and being a mother where I prioritize my children. Um, so that these two have been my blockages, if you may. Unachievable um, goals, right? Yeah. Yeah, this causes frustration, right? Um, it's really hard when we we set goals to ourselves that we just cannot achieve, you know, at, at that stage. So this is super important to create achievable goals, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, probably mesology and uh, country culture where we were born, it's very important. And also uh, the comfort zone or professional life because we are so dedicated many years to 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 have a career and we don't have and we don't find time for for anything else that could help us to to gain a more more a wider um, approach and um 
Uh, well, uh, and that uh, ro robotization, is that the word? Robaxis, robotization. I don't know exactly the word in oh, English. Right. Yeah, no, you, you're right that you said it well. Robotization is good. Robotization, yes. And uh, well, I think that uh, this is the worst, probably, in my opinion. Oh, I think uh, ego. You know, sometimes I, I see that my ego gets in the way of things that I'm gonna do, and so if I give lots of importance to the ego and not to the consciousness I am. So I get stuck in little things and then come fears, come trauma, comes all types of things, proud, and all, all things that um, don't help. And so I think those things is the ones for me that uh, right now it's appearing more. I like comparing, I think those things doesn't help, not healthy. Yeah, I agree. And this is pretty common, right? I guess all of us go through this as well, which is, which is a shame because everyone has totally a, a different consciousnesses, right? With different levels of lucidity and maturity and experiences. How can we compare ourselves to other people? It's just impossible, right? Yeah. And also don't let us show our uniqueness. Exactly. And, and they think that uh, can help others and the others can help us. But uh, yeah, and sometimes like you did, Tati, put yourself in a book, show yourself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that... Uh, you know, you're there, you're exposed, and uh, it's good after all, but before it, like, you have to go through the steps to get there. It's a lot of ego stuff going on also. What other things, and, uh, you know, courage of being there and you step up and be yourself and do things. Yeah. Miki, do you want to say something? Oh, yeah, there. In, in connection with uh, what Magali said, I would also add perfectionist. Perfectionist, this is <laughs> big for me. And uh, the other thing, it's that thin line between self-indulgence and overpressure when it is about our proexis. We, I, we, I, in my case, I, I'm not always in balance. Sometimes I'm self-indulging myself. Sometimes I'm put so much pressure on me, and the result is not, uh, result is not good. I think. Agreed. Uh, who is next? Is it uh, Kim or Maria? Yep. No, it's yep me. Um, okay. I, I was going to say in terms of traps, um, it's kind of basically everything about intraphysical life. It's it's the body um, that inhibits our lucidity, that has all these kind of desires and wants and drives that can take over large parts of our life, especially when we're especially when we're younger. Um, it's the lack of connection often that we have with other intermissivists that we are surrounded we're born into a family and and into a community where i mean so many people that i think have an intermissivist background often talk about feeling um uh, uh like the aliens in their own family or aliens in their community for for different times until they find until they find their people um, Grace, in terms of your question about the body, um, it it's it just it cuts us off from our like we forget we forget the um, why we're here basically, and we forget the bigger picture. We become like the like the baboon um, looking at the nut about things that are body related, 
um, and we lose sight of the bigger picture. And it's also the it's also the way, right? Like it's a trap, but it's also, um, I guess, the, all, all all those things become the way in which we do end up fulfilling our existential program and our, our intermissive whatever we planned by becoming attuned to the body, by listening to the body, by um, fine tuning ourselves, all those things. But in the first instance, it's like the shield, right? That blocks us off from from things. Um, and then those other things like having to survive, life is survival, right? You have, I guess the evolutionary uh, biology perspective would be interested of being primed over millions of years to survive, to focus on nourishment, shelter, procreation. And now here we are saying, hey, these things are not the priority, it's just something else. So that's going against a really strong um, biological instinct. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's challenging. No one said it's easy, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's such. Sure someone said it on the other side when they were feeling all optimistic and yeah, oh, yeah, it'll be easy. <laughs> I don't think they they said it would be easy. I don't think so. But the sense I I have is that the level of interassistance and friendship and support and maturity was so high that people get that got that feeling you know that um we can do it you know i don't think we we I mean, you have it now i don't know if you i'm sure you would have had this this everybody yeah. who, everybody who who mess who kind of works in this area you have these moments of of euphoria right intraphysical euphoria when you've had a great insight where you have this sense that i can do anything right i can create all these things that i want to create easy i can do it you know and then those moments don't last very long but um i i in think they i think they reflect I, i'm sure when pamela's party end of intermissive course party was happening everybody was super <laughs> super <laughs> rose-colored glasses how, how it was going to go but in a group we feel stronger right yeah it, it helps when yeah. we are in a group we feel stronger we feel that we can do things yeah oh guys we have five minutes and i want to hear maria still she, she she raised her hands oh hi hey um, I was um, thinking of the traps, and in 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 my case, my my life was pretty good in the beginning. I felt, knowing what I know now, I think I had a good childhood, and I was born with these characteristics almost as a diperto person. So I I was intrusion free to totally until until uh, maybe around twenty years old. Um, I was just all right, and I, and I had I had some degree of parapsychism as well, and then um, I wanted to explore. I went to university, and I I wanted to explore more about my uh, parapsychism, parapsychism. So I wanted to understand better what was what that all that volitation was all that out of the body experiences was there was no information there was nothing and until until so big trap I went to a psychologist and he gave me pills and for almost 20 years I was a baboon <laughs> I, was, I was a nice baboon but I, I lost um, track of uh pr probably if my prox is even uh so it took a long time to, to recover it took me then to become a mom and then my daughter as a child she got information from her invisible friends and that's when i woke up again wow so this is this is true this this is really happening it's i was not crazy so and then i got back but yeah, big trap sometimes is is really the 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 culture we're born in, and and um, um, difficulty to meet the right people, and then intrusion happens. 
because you are no you are not anymore in that nice level uh, you are not yourself you are not in, in in the pro axis and intrusion simply happens so i think what a, a lot of what happens and what i have discovered in the last two weeks also doing penta and things and because i'm under an, another pr a process also is i have been um understanding that in my case uh, high levels of intrusion have been present and stopping me for many years to do a number of things. And I'm dealing with that now and I hope that I, I can uh, sort it out. But yeah, um, it's it's not always money and jobs and uh, that kind of thing. It's the astrophysical beat also. Uh, other lives, our, pre our previous lives, other... Uh, repeating so we then try to re tend to repeat the mistakes of previous lives and that's I think that's intrusion also the self mimesis but also intruders that were with us so other consciousnesses that were with us pre previously that want to repeat that and and um, are comfortable with that and we uh, yeah we do it and th that's it <laughs> like, that's yeah. my case remember now you have your group right you're not alone. Guys, it's over. How come? <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for such a lovely discussion. We are all baboons tonight, hoping, or today, and wherever you are, hoping to be more like a consciousness and less baboons. Um and I hope to see you guys next month with the next two chapters. Can I, if, can you guys give me just 30 seconds for me to give the uh, next uh, intermission? 14th of October. Okay, pretty quick, okay? So what are you going to do for next meeting? Intermission three. First one, you got. You guys are gonna read chapter five and six, okay? Any insights? You are going to select one passage of each chapter that drew your attention, so we can start discussion from there. And um, three, real life connections. Find a real life example or examples that relate to these chapters. Innate ideas and self motivation for energetic development. These are the chapters. And the last one is a lab. You're going to do a lab, okay? What is it? You're going to do a 30-minute immersion on innate ideas. You go to your bedroom or if you have a, another room with a chair or in your bed. Hopefully, uh, you can have the space for yourself. So you can just stay by yourself and not talk to anyone intraphysically. Uh, and you are going to work with your energies as much as you can, clear your mind, and uh, think about your own innate ideas, okay? Since you are a kid, so what you think about life, uh, about, uh, you know, the surroundings, your family, your um, yourself, if you had any goals in your life, since you were a kid, try to was a kid, try to remember things in your life that show you you had innate ideas about evolution, about yourself, about the reality, about the world, about the universe, whatever. Just think about this about 30 minutes. And only when the 30 minutes finish, you are going to write your ideas down. Because you're going to give yourself, create this sort of like a bubble to interact with the helpers and activate your memories. Okay? Any questions? So Magali and uh, Kim, have you got any messages? Yes, we do. First of all, we have two messages today. One is that uh, next book club, we are changing the dates. So instead of being, uh, not, uh, I don't remember the, the date it was, but 21st, will, of the 21st. 21st, it will be the 14th 
Okay, we are gonna send the publicity again with the new date, right, for everyone. And the second thing is like, uh, I think Adina will uh, talk about uh, an event that is gonna happen. And I don't know if King after the hair wants to talk also, Adina. Thank you, thank you for, very much for the opportunity. I I will try to be very short. So uh, I'm very happy to, to announce you, even if many of you already know that uh, we are uh, organizing an event, a conscienciology event in Bucharest uh, uh, between 6th and uh, 8th of October. Um, event in uh, in Bucharest after after many years uh, which um, uh, will um, uh, consist of a book launch we will launch uh, um, evolutionary communication by Anna Senu and as well other other three uh, three uh, books that uh, um have already been launched lately but uh, well the glossary we have a three uh, lingual glossary uh, portuguese english and uh, romanian of course and uh, uh, as well romanian is part of thesaurus uh with um, of uh, conscienciology terms and eliani voslav will also be here and talk about the this huge project and then we will have two dynamics and uh, uh, on Sunday a uh, field course. Actually, is the first field course ever happened in uh, uh, in Romania. It's the first, very first one. And yeah, it is a challenge as well. And uh, well, uh, the next two days on uh, Monday and uh, Tuesday, we uh, will try to do an energetic reading of the capital of Romania, of Bucharest, and uh, we will go in some places uh, to the mountains, uh, 100 far from Bucharest. And uh, well, I know that many of you uh, are uh, very far and it is very difficult to, to come here, but well, you are anytime very welcome in Romania. Uh, and uh, for for those who are in Europe, yeah, it would be great to to have them here. But uh, well, I would like to ask all of you to connect with our event and to connect with the Romanian Holothocene between sixth and tenth of October. And by the way, we will have twenty people coming from uh, from Brazil. Thank you. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Kim, Michiko, do you want to to say anything else? Um, I don't. I don't uh, think so at this point. The only other thing, maybe I don't know, Felipe, how much longer you're in, how you're longer you're in Europe. But there is also another event in Germany, um, the week before the event in Romania. So there's a couple of big things if you happen to be in Europe still um, in October. No, no, yeah, I will be here. Yeah, it's good to to know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. And then. Yeah. And it is also an ECP one uh, in the last uh, in in Porto in Portugal the last weekend of uh, October. Okay, thank you guys. So yes, see everyone next uh, appointment is fourteen October. We'll send the the news. No, the reminder. The reminder. Update. The the flyer, the update, so everyone knows. Okay, see yeah. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.